Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 with another Dreams Logic video. Today we'll be looking at some of the most useful gadgets in Dreams, the keyframe and timeline. The keyframe is very similar to the action recorder in that it basically records the things that you move with your imp. Unlike the action recorder, however, the keyframe will only hold the last frame of your edit. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm going to be referring to the action recorder a lot in this tutorial because there's a lot of similarities, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, you might need to go back and watch that one. You'll see that as soon as I stamp down the keyframe, my imp turns into a recording dot, just like the action recorder, and we've also got the same stop recording button over on the right. If we grab this cube and drag it down, you'll see that it gets the texture over the top of it, indicating that it's recorded something for that object. We'll go and stop the recording there, and the cube will snap back into its original position. We'll then just go and grab a switch, which just outputs an on-off signal, and we'll plug that into the power of the keyframe. You'll see that I can turn the frame on and off, and because it only records the last frame of what we did to the object, it'll move between the spots in a single frame. If we pop into the tweak menu here, there's a few options, but I'll go over the rest of them in a moment. For now, we'll concentrate on the two sliders down the bottom. These are the fade in and fade out sliders, and we'll just go ahead and set these both to two seconds. We'll jump out of the tweak menu again and turn the keyframe back on, and you'll see that instead of jumping between the two positions, it now takes two seconds to transition between the two spots. This is incredibly powerful, and you can use this for countless things, from character movement to logic changes, which I'll show you in a minute. We'll turn the phase off again and pull out a timer gadget from the menu. And we'll plug the timer percentage output into the power port on the keyframe, just like we did with the switch. This will start slowly increasing the signal strength to the keyframe, turning it on. If we play this back again now, you'll see that even though we've turned our fade in and out completely off, the timer sending its percentage signal to the keyframe transitions it between the two spots for however long the timer is set for. We could increase the timer length here and make the transition take a shorter or longer amount of time. We've got a smoothing option here, which will smooth the transition between the two spots. If you're doing complex animations, it's best to have this option turned off because the smoothing can cause some unwanted movements when it tries to smooth the animation. We've then got the Keep Changes button, which will keep the object you've modified in the spot that you move it to after the keyframe's activated, but you'll see this in action soon. Keyframes are great by themselves, but they're incredibly powerful when they're used in conjunction with a timeline. If we put a timeline down here and drag our keyframe onto it, you'll see it turns into a bar, which is a single frame of playtime. We'll duplicate this frame, and you'll see that because it's at the very start of the timeline, it activates and moves the block. You'll also notice that the keyframe has kept the animations from our old keyframe, which in this case isn't really what we're after, so it's often safer to just start with a new keyframe rather than duplicating them. Also note that if we were to now duplicate the cube, it would keep the animations that are applied to it so we'd have to go through and manually remove the animations from the objects if we don't want them. If we go into record mode on our duplicated keyframe here and press triangle on the cube, you'll see that it removes the animation from it. We'll re-record the animation for the cube, but we'll put it up at the top here this time. And now if we play this back, you'll see that the box stays in its spot until it hits the second keyframe. It then blinks down and then back up. Let's say we want to transition the movement between the spots like we did before. All we need to do is make sure the keyframes are on the same line on the timeline and shift X on the space between the keyframes that turns green. You'll see that a line appears between the keyframes showing that they're linked together. You'll also see the cube now has a path that it's going to follow just like with our action recorder. And if we play this back, the cube will slowly move down like we'd expect. Now the cube doesn't stay down the bottom where we'd expect it to, it sort of bounces back up after the keyframe turns off. So we'll jump back into our tweak menu for the second keyframe and turn on the keep changes button and play it back again. You'll see the cube is now kept in the second keyframe's position after it turns off. If we want to increase the time that the animation takes to play out, all we need to do is drag the second keyframe along the timeline further. 
there's more transition options that you've got access to by again shift xing on the space between the keyframes. You can set it to start slow and get faster towards the end. And you can set it to start fast and slow down towards the end. There's also the slow start and the slow finish uh, with it being fastest in the middle which is great for smooth looking movements without fast starts or ends to the animation. If we pop into the tweak menu again, you can see the blend types off the top there, which is what we were just changing by shift Xing between the keyframes. This one doesn't have one applied to it because the transition is applied to the keyframe that you're transitioning from, not the keyframe you're transitioning to. We'll quickly jump into the timeline tweak menu here and you'll see a lot of similar options to the action recorder with the playback speed and modes. I won't go into them because I covered those ones in detail in the previous tutorial. We've also got the restart timeline input, which will set the timeline back to the starting position if you activate it. We've got the on end trigger, which will send a signal when the timeline is at the end of its cycle. Beneath this, we've got the playhead position, which is similar to our percentage output on the timers. It'll just output a percentage based on how far through the timeline the playhead is. There's also the ignore frame rate option, which tells the timeline to play at real time, no matter what the frame rate is. This would be handy if you're doing precise timings one after another and need things to happen at exactly the right time, no matter what the circumstances. If I put a destroyer on the timeline here, we can resize it by grabbing the very start or end of it with our imp and dragging forwards or backwards along the timeline. Let's say we want the wall to be destroyed after it finishes the animation. Note that this will affect the wall because that's what the timeline is attached to. We'll drag our destroyer down the end here and it'll destroy what the timeline is connected to when it's activated. You can almost put anything on a timeline. I haven't come across a gadget that you can't put on there yet, but if you know of one, leave a comment and let us know what it is. Like the action recorder, we don't just have the ability to move physical objects, but we can modify sliders and things with them as well. We'll go into record mode with the last keyframe again and turn the color of the cube to green and stop the recording. Now this has changed the color of the cube permanently because we have not set the first keyframe to be a different color. We'll set the first to be red again and you can see that as the second keyframe activates, it turns the cube green. So this second keyframe has recorded both the color and the cube movement shown by the texture over them. The first animation I made in Dreams was called Last Night and that was done almost completely with keyframes. I'll play this one now just so you can see what's possible with the keyframes modifying other gadgets. That's all for this one guys, hope you enjoyed the video, see you again soon.